Okay, Diary, we are here in the study. It is July 2023. I'm with um, an increasingly frustrating product. In this case, it's the Ventura 11-inch uh, laptop, which um, I have a quantity of um, because I'm involved in some charitable work, and these are the laptops that are being dealt out to us. Now, the frustration comes from the point of view uh, of the fact that whilst this is a 2023 laptop, uh, I'd previously been given some four or five year old laptops, uh, some Toshiba 14 inch laptops, Portage laptops, and those four or now actually six year old laptops are infinitely faster than the thing that you see in front of me. So this is shipped with Windows 10, it's got a two gigabyte memory, and the quest is let's make it go faster. I just need it to be a usable system in the sense that uh, it needs to be able to boot up quickly and be a, a web browser. So effectively something uh, of equivalent Chromebook functionality with not too awful battery life and a Wi-Fi that works. Uh, so again, this comes with Windows 10. It's sluggish as hell. And so I think I've got three alternatives. Uh, the first would be to install a Linux distribution on this laptop. Now you see in front of you uh, the laptop booted with the uh, M Ubuntus Linux, which I have used before. Uh, I've installed the 32-bit version because I, thought <clears throat> because I thought that might be more memory efficient than the 64-bit version. And since there's only two gigabytes of memory, uh, it's not going to be, that won't, that, that won't be a problem. Uh, so that's one possibility. Uh, I'd already tried to pare down the Windows 10 to make it quicker. So there's some obvious things like turning off Windows Search uh, and that's made it marginally quicker. But someone has done this much more professionally and they've called it Tiny 10. So there's a product called Tiny 10 and I think there's probably a Tiny 11 as well, which is a super stripped down version of Windows. So that is a, another possibility. Um, and the precursor to all of that was to try and um, back up this computer so that I could restore it back to its original state. Uh, and that's where <laughs> things have not gone well. I mean, Microsoft really doesn't help itself by not having uh, an integrated backup restore tool. Um, I mean, in general, uh, people are, or manufacturers, uh, have come to the idea of perhaps um, if you install everything via an app store uh, and then they know what apps are installed on which machine, what you can do is you could reinstall the machine from scratch. The app store knows what apps you had previously installed, so they will be installed, let's say, automatically for you. And then thirdly, you will have backed up your data um, to, the, to the cloud or in such a fashion. Now, instead of that, uh, Windows does have a backup tool. And let's try and find that backup tool, shall we? So we're in the M Ubuntu Linux. We're going to shut that guy down. So Control-Alt-T for terminal. Nothing happened. <laughs> will I be able to edit that out? No. Oh, there it is, terminal. Uh, okay, the next step is to start Windows. Let's see how this fantastically fast computer will start up. Press the power key. Got the logo. Let's get some startup action here. Come on, you can do it. So to me, this is just un unacceptably slow. Right. So we've now booted. If we search for backup, so you can see that you can backup uh, to another drive, but, but unbelievably. Uh, it's, it's just so sad 
uh, Microsoft does, has not really upgraded the, the backup restore tool uh, since Windows 7. So you can go to that tool, let's go to the Windows 7 backup tool, but we're, remain, we're obviously in Windows 10. So we can do create a system image. And you can choose another hard drive. <clears throat> but I was not able to specify this USB key. So instead of that, I thought we could do create a system repair disk. And then it reminded me that I needed a CD drive. Um, and I had thought that on some versions you could, you could burn it to an ISO and then take the ISO away, but not on this version of Windows, or, or it could be that my memory is defective. So I have no obvious way, no easy way to back up this system. So instead of what I've done is I have um, found the Windows key. So you can Google uh, a PowerShell line, uh, which will which will ask what the Windows current Windows key is. And I think the next step would be to note down that Windows key. There's no personal information on this Windows laptop. The next thing I'm going to try and do is use the Tiny 10 ISO file, which I can find, boot that up, over install this computer with the Tiny 10, and uh, see if that goes any faster. Diary, okay, <clears throat> so we're at attempt number two. Attempt number one, if you remember, to speed up the system was to uh, do a quick uh, stopping of known wasteful Windows services, things like Windows Search and some instrumentation services <clears throat> and deleting all software that I considered to be a load of bloat. Now, stage two was to use the uh, NT Devs GitHub. So it's the NT Dev uh, GitHub uh, from NT Dev Labs Tiny 11 Builder. So what this does, it allows you to create a slimmed down version of Windows 11. And I'm just going to say in words what you need to do to get there. So first of all, you need to build a Windows.ISO. And the way I did it was to use a UUP dump website. And from UUP dump, you have to try and find a particular build of Windows. So I found the uh, .1265 build of Windows. Now executing that uh, script that UUP dump uh, downloads for you um, involves, well, a couple of hours, I think, of work on a modest PC and on my super duper server um, PC with, well, more than 40 cores, um, it still took quite a long time. Uh, anyway, at the end of that, you have a .iso, which is a boot, a regular bootable Windows 11 .iso. And at that point, you need to download from the uh, GitHub the oscdimg.exe and the Windows bat file. So with both the, with, with, with those two things, um, you're able to kick off a batch file and that batch file will create a slimmed down .iso. Uh, when, when I first did it, I forgot to download the .exe file, the oscdimg.exe file. Um, and so it, it broke down. Then I downloaded one and it didn't work. So then I had to search on another machine to get one which did work. But eventually I found a working oscdimg.exe file that, that ran correctly on my Windows server. So having done that, I then booted the .iso, which was made onto a USB stick using Rufus, which is now version 4, I note. Um, so Rufus took the .iso file and created a, a bootable USB stick, put that bootable USB stick into this rather meagre laptop, <laughs> and installed um, Windows 11. Now, according to the instructions, I should be able to update Windows, and indeed the first update did work, um, and that brought Windows up. It, it, it took about another, at least one hour, to upgrade Windows on this very slow laptop. 
uh, even in this skinned down form. And if I now look at the memory screen here, if I tilt it towards you, it is using 1.2 gigabytes out of its two gigabyte uh, for memory. And it says it's committed 2.9 out of 3.6 gigabytes. So it's still uh, not ideal and I think pretty sluggish. So, even, so my, my conclusion is with two gigabytes of memory uh, with Windows 11, oh, I had to use Windows 11, by the way, because even though this machine came with Windows 10, the NT dev uh, GitHub only deals with Windows 11. Um, I think there was a tiny 10 project, but I, just, I, did, I didn't go with that. So I've got the tiny 11 project, if you like. Uh, and so tiny 11 builder project. So you need to search for GitHub tiny 11 builder. Um, so I think that even with this skinned down Windows version 11, and even if I could get the updates working, um, probably by starting the whole process all over again, I'm still not happy with the speed. And by the way... And finally, um, I think I've got to a working configuration. So to review, this is the Ventura cheapo uh, laptop with an 11.6 inch screen, I believe. Um, and I'm trying to transform it into something that's usable in the sense that uh, with Windows installed, even Windows 10 and in the, even in S mode, it's just an appallingly slow system. I, I find it personally totally unusable. Uh, so eventually we have got the Ubuntu version 4 installed. Uh, I'd like to install version 5, but that's still a release candidate. And uh, uh, I've waited a while and it's still a release candidate. <laughs> and installing it works not very well at all. It doesn't actually work. I couldn't find the Wi-Fi card. So I've had to go back to Ubuntu version 4. We're going to do a power on test and you can make your own decision as to whether this is acceptable or not. So this is completely from cold. It's not hibernated. Power on 3, 2, 1, go. Not edited video, real time. Thirty-two bit version because it would be kind of on memory. Uh, edition four of Emma not edition four of Debian. A bit confusing there. And we have a desktop. We have a desktop. Okay, so we're uh, just about two minutes into the video with my uh, blabbing on. Uh, let's just load Mr. Firefox, which is down here. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad, I think. I think it's acceptable. Now, you'll notice on the left, uh, I have my uh, Brand spanking new and well, in fact, bargain priced Google Pixel 4 XL phone. Now, this is running Android uh, 13 and uh, it doesn't connect correctly. So, the, the, to review, um, a basic configuration of this laptop would include, I would say, a connection to your smartphone. Now, under Windows, there's something called Windows Link which will allow you to link your smartphone to your laptop, uh, in fact, these days wirelessly. Um, and that should be able to display on your phone screen if things like SMSs, uh, you can use it to import photographs that you've taken uh, on your phone. Um, but more than anything, it's, it's a good uh, integration. So I was looking for something equivalent uh, in the Linux world, and there's something called KDE Connect. Guess what? That that implies you're running the KDE uh, graphical interface, and we aren't under uh, Ubuntus. So I didn't attempt to install that. That would just surely end in misery. And then I remembered that there's a package called SCR CPY, SCR CPY. That's like screen copy. And that would allow you, if it would work, to put the screen of your phone onto the laptop. 
and that's a really great package and I've been using that and uh, Linux Ubuntu on my Windows laptop for, 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 for forever so long. In fact, I wrote an article about how, how could I possibly not have known about this package before? And that really transforms the usefulness of my Linux desktop. But I'm afraid to say, no matter how hard I try, it doesn't work on this platform. So basically, the phone connect is useless. You can plug it in and your Android phone can be seen. Uh, the file system of your Android phone can be seen. On, on your on your Linux desktop, but that uh, doesn't give you the phone integration, and to me that makes it a bit of a dead loss in terms of phone to phone to PC. So what have we got? We've got a two gigabyte uh, mediocrely powered, well, mediocre slash pathetically weakly powered laptop uh, for about two hundred pounds, something like one hundred and eighty pounds. My summary view is that I'm afraid you'd be better off buying uh, an Asus laptop for about 200, if, you, if your budget allows, for about £250. Now, of course, that's a huge percentage uplift on £180. So to, to say this again, this is a £180 laptop, but it's compromised. The screen is small. It's pathetically underpowered. And only by installing Linux and the 32-bit version at that could I get it to go in any way, shape or form quickly. It was totally unusable with Windows 10. And although I have tried a Windows 11 install, which can be done uh, with a tiny 11 stripped down version of Windows, uh, that did not prove very reliable. So I had to go back to Windows 10. That was just too slow. So we've ended up here with a, a purposefully light version of Linux. That does work. And if your budget really is £180, then I think you are stuck here. If your budget is about £250, I'd recommend going onto Amazon and buying an Asus, uh, an entry-level Asus laptop, um, which you can get without you know, a ghastly Celeron process. I think you can get them something like an i3 for that price. Okay, Diary, that's it for now. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Ventura. I'm going to shut you down and uh, then hand it on to uh, one of the people in my team. Okay, thanks. Bye.